Just like in Canada, a large percentage of the Australian economy relies on real estate to continue to expand. It's not just about building houses. There are many services, contractors, equipment, and more that go into each and every home. With such heavy reliance on one particular industry, when downturns occur, the effects can be dramatic. We have seen just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what is headed for Australia. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at Australia's economy slowing down as real estate falls. This is the primary factor that people need to be focusing on. Yes, there are trade issues that are happening today. Yes, the global economy is slowing. But each individual country, each city, each state or region all has their own nuances and we can focus on those and we can pull up the statistics that align all of this information together and that's what we'll do today. So let's begin. I wanted to begin with this article that's actually from December of 2018 which will lead us into some new information but this is what happens even as all of the world is engaging in stimulus beyond all measure this is now becoming a discussion in Australia. Reserve Bank says rate cuts and QE possible as Australian housing enters quote uncharted territory. In a speech to a business economist dinner on Thursday night not only did the bank's deputy governor say further rate cuts were possible but also that that the RBA could engage in quantitative easing like the Fed did to assist the recovery from the global financial crisis if it was needed. So they haven't necessarily created a program of quantitative easing like we see with the ECB, like we see with the Federal Reserve and others. They're basically just suggesting if it comes to it, we're going to print money. This is how bad the situation is that they are coming up with these quote unquote solutions, but this has never worked. It doesn't work. They're doing it today in other countries and it's not going to be the solution that Australia needs. If prices of homes are too high and people can't buy them and then you see the slowdown that occurs, maybe that's a signal that prices shouldn't have been that high in the first place. So what do they do? They create a whole bunch of strategies to force those prices up or to at least keep them at that level. Does that make any sense to you? Well, we're going to talk about some of that today. A generation of young Australians priced out of the property market and frustrated at a widening wealth divide could prove pivotal in triggering a change in government in May. They talk about all the different programs, the tax incentives, and allowing people to buy these homes at a potentially a cheaper price. Well, how in the world is this going to ever happen if you're not willing to change the actual structure, the actual reason why this happened in the first place? They don't know what they're talking about, at least on the outside. All they want is more votes. That's what this comes down to. This is a very big mistake to try and intervene in these markets more than you already have. You have interest rates near rock bottom. If people can't afford it right now at these extremely low rates they're not going to be able to do so and that's okay because if someone can't afford to buy a home then they should rent you shouldn't be giving all the reasons to expand this bubble any further my goodness this is a chart that corresponds to this. Locked out home ownership rates for the 25 to 34 year olds have fallen since the 1980s. That's the US, Australia, and England. All of them, of course, have been taking a serious dive since the financial crisis. This is very important to note because what you can see today is that homes have been priced way, way too high. There are many factors, but primarily the interest rates are too low. That has caused a bubble in the first place. You engage in all this quantitative easing, money has to go somewhere, it has gone primarily primarily into equities in the US number one, as well as real estate in many areas like Australia, for instance. A boom for boomers. Australian government spending is increasingly focused on the older generation average net benefits per household, just to show you that here on this chart. Australia's worst property slump in a generation has created some obvious losers. Investors who bought at the top of the market are, in fact, underwater. Homeowners looking to sell are having to slash prices, and developers are struggling to offload apartments as projects started in the height of the boom near completion. This is a big issue, actually, that I'm seeing in Toronto. You're seeing these developers who back in, let's say, 2016, they announced it, they put their sign over 
here, they're going to build something, maybe it was a retail, maybe it was a mixed use property, and then suddenly things changed. It's been sitting there since then, they own the land, I'm sure, and it's just waiting and waiting for this market to pick back up. Maybe they couldn't get the financing. Maybe they're waiting for something to change drastically, but it's not going to come, at least not in the foreseeable future. This is a bubble, and that's what we're dealing with today. Many are not willing to admit it, but we're starting to see some individuals out there talking about it, but now they are actually reducing interest rates. The Federal Reserve is making it much easier. You're having the reserve rate ratios declining in China, for example. They are trying to do everything they can to keep this bubble going, but in fact, all that's going to do is make the eventual pop much worse. They make a good point in this next paragraph here. What we're looking at is the first time home buyers and how this has made it more affordable since the prices have fallen. Exactly. And what happens? Well, all of a sudden people see the opportunity and they jump on it and they buy a home. But if the prices were sky high and they had to then go further into debt, maybe they had to borrow money from somebody else, a parent, maybe they use some of their credit cards to buy this and that. It's not a good idea. You want the prices to to naturally fall to a reasonable level and then people can get in. Of course, that actually hasn't happened, but at least the prices did come down a little bit. Some individuals thought now's the time to buy. Just to note the fact that prices surged as much as 75% during a five-year boom that peaked in mid-2017. That corresponds approximately to what we saw in Canada as well. There's more details in here if you'd like to check it out. Of course, they're talking about all the different reasons why what has happened more recently in Australia has been positive for certain groups of individuals. So if you want to check that out, I will have it in the description as always. This is just showing you a chart. Demand from first home buyers is supporting the bottom end of the market. Obviously, they're not buying the luxury properties, but just showing you the differences among the different levels. I'll leave that with you. Moving on to this, it's about China. People in Australia today are dealing with China's slowing economy. They're talking about a particular real estate agent. His sales have slumped by as much as half from their peak. Now that tells you something. It could be the individual, of course. It could be one particular company. But we see this as being a trend. I talk to people within the industry as well, locally in Toronto, and they are telling me the same thing. Sales have slowed, inventories building up. I've talked to people through my comments section they are suggesting the same thing of course I want to know from you no matter where you are in the world do you see inventories building up what's happening if you are in the real estate industry please let me know I mean I do talk to people all the time but every single time you have some information for me please let me know in the comment section I am actively looking at the comments every single day I can't get back to everybody there's so many comments coming through but of course I want to know as much as I possibly can I read 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 those all day long but they just come in so fast it's hard to keep up. That's reflected in recent government data showing that China is no longer Australia's biggest foreign investor amid a plunge in property prices. Property purchases, excuse me. There are two main factors behind the drop. The first is people not being able to get the money out of China and from mid-2017 China's economy started to slow and that also had an effect. I'm sure that this is to some degree very truthful, so I could at least partially agree with that without looking into it further because we've been discussing that the information on the channel. Right at the very last sentence, they mentioned something that people need to understand. Since then, since the peak, prices in Australia's biggest city have dropped 13%. This number continues to drop slowly but surely. I remember it when it was below 10%, and it was 11%, then it was 12%, now it's 13%. And I will continue to cover this, of course, just stick with me here as we go through this global slowdown that is occurring. You're seeing it today. Yes, the prices are still high. They are very high, I'm not denying that, but it's important to know what is the cause of this. People need to understand what central banks are and their impact on the economy as a whole, and that applies to every single country. Housing led boom, residential investment led as inflows surge to a record. Foreign investment approved for commercial property as well as foreign investment approved for residential property. Just showing you this, you can clearly see that it peaked out 2016, then 2017 it starts to fall, and 2018 is even worse. I'm obviously going to cover these numbers in more detail in the future, so stay tuned for that. 
This article is talking about a particular developer. They're seeing this slow down dramatically in Australia right now. Again, it could be that particular developer, but it seems to be the case for so many of them. So it's not just the one, though some of them could be more affected than others. In this case in particular, they're actually quoted here, ABC, saying this, With housing well and truly in a downturn, the director said this was one of the worst he had seen. Builders are just battering down the hatches and looking after their costs. We've probably seen a reduction of about 30% of sales. Look at the top right corner. You can see all of these related stories here, including construction slump intensifies home building in sharpest slide since 2012. Apartment building bust picks up speed with further falls predicted. When almost 1,700 construction businesses went bust in a year, this particular individual pays the price. Housing prices fall rapidly and so on. So definitely keep your eye on this information as we go through the decline in real estate in Australia and other places around the world. I'm going to cover it here on the channel, but if you know anything in particular, always share it in the comments. I'm paying attention and I know other people from around the world are as well. This is the chart that corresponds to that building permits for new homes are down almost 40% from their peak. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. You're supporting the truth. So I do appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you want the financial education that you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. I talk about real estate in here. I do talk about interest rates. I'm talking about everything you need to know about these topics and many more. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. If you want to know about the negative equity crisis that is taking place in Australia and the US, if you haven't seen it already, click on this video and I will see you there.